Hello everyone, this is my work in progress video created for the Reillusion lip sync contest. I'll try to share some of my tips, but please consider that when it comes to CGI, I'm kind of a newbie, so don't take anything I say as something that would a professional 3D artist do. And also, please feel free to share any of your suggestions in the comment section, if you feel like it. Anyways, I hope you find this video useful, so let's begin! For this project, I wanted to take a traditionally drawn character and try to create a three-dimensional version of them. I have been working as an illustrator for most of my life, so I was curious to compare the two mediums and learn more about the advantages and disadvantages of 3D animation. And since I love long hair, I definitely wanted to do someone um, uh, with a braid, something like uh, this guy. This is Judao from the show called Maggie, created by the talented Shinobu Otaka and animated by A1 Picture Studio in Japan. Because it's 2021, making a 3D character is far easier than it used to be. Instead of building the body from scratch every time and then spending hours rigging it and weight painting everything by hand, nowadays there are programs like uh, Character Creator 3, which comes with pretty cool already rigged humanoid avatars that you can modify to your heart's content. Great for newbies like me! In Judar's case, I decided to use the Cartoon Character Designer Bundle to save time stylizing her realistic body, and more specifically, Steve, who seemed close enough to what I needed. Isn't that right, Steve? Here is the final result and what I've learned in the meantime. Please do feel free to disagree with my methods and suggest easier ones, <laughs> I think. I definitely would appreciate them, <laughs> thank you! Number 1. Do these skills come in handy after all? I highly recommend having an image editing program such as Photoshop or anything similar just in case. Although CC3 facilitates the whole process of creating a character, you would still need to adjust the PBR maps in order to get the final result you have in your head. And trust me, playing with the brightness and saturation is not really enough. Number 2. Check for tools in Reillusion's marketplace that might come in handy. For the muscles, I used a tool called Realistic Human Skin that I have no idea where it came from. <laughs> I don't really remember buying it, so it was probably in a bundle or something that I bought without realizing. Regardless, adding details like apps was the easiest thing ever, thanks to the surprise! Tip number 3. Anything is customizable, as long as you have the right software. Most of the accessories and clothes I created in Blender using simple meshes and modifying them until I get the right shape. For the top, I simply extruded some of the polygons of the original character's mesh. The scarf I created in Marvelous Designer so I can get it to look more fabricy. The pants though were the ones that gave me the most trouble. I tried several different designs in Marvelous Designer but in the end, I just used a UV sphere in Blender and then just sculpted it until it looked like baggy pants. Number 4. Plan the hair in advance. I had a lot of fun designing the hair, but it also looks kind of messy since I didn't use any reference photos for the hairstyle and therefore hair ribbons are sticking out of pretty much everywhere. I highly recommend getting the Blender Hair Tool plugin if you haven't already and designing the actual hair in Blender if you're looking to create something specific. You can get it from Gumroad and I'll also include the link in the description below. It made creating hairstyles pretty easy and actually fun! 
for the animated look, I tapered the ends to keep them pointy. I also decided to keep the majority of the braid structure as simple shapes to not overwhelm the rendering process. Rigging and weight painting ribbons? Not my forte at my current skill level. And since we're talking about weight painting, number five, master weight painting. There were a few elements that proved to be more difficult than expected. One of them were the pants. I figured out that transferring skin weights to baggy things not really straightforward as I wanted to be. But I eventually discovered that if I tell CC3 that the pants are actually a skirt, then the weight transfer will go far more smoothly and there wouldn't be much work needed to correct any weird popping bits when the character is posing. As conclusion, just, just save yourself the trouble, imagine it's a skirt. For the hair on the head, I had to restrain myself and only add physics to the bangs. Maybe next time I wouldn't go crazy and wouldn't create a hairy jungle. Anyways, the bangs are enough, at least for now. The braid on the other hand gave me the most trouble. I wanted to add armature to it so I can at least have some control, but the weights were always messed up. So I finally settled on something that you see on the screen, but if you have some suggestions, please feel free to share them in the comment section. I tried the free spring plugin from the Reillusion website, but I eventually found out that the spring effect option built in iCron 7 was more than enough to achieve the desired result. And finally, a bonus tip, use morphs when you can. Working as a 2D illustrator made me realize how important eyes are to relay emotions and consequently connect with the viewer. For me, having the pupil and iris expand and contract during animation is probably one of the most important features that gives your character life. Plus, you can use morphs to fix certain things during posing. Anyways, this is all I have so far. I truly hope you found something useful in this video that might help you in your own projects one day. And don't forget, I'm still inexperienced when it comes to 3D, so feel free to look at better tips in the Reillusion community and share them if you feel like it. Have a nice day!